Oh hey guys, uh, this is Red Shadow and welcome back to my channel and I hate to start these pickup videos with the same old griping and complaining as I've done in the past but damn, I could have had this video recorded and up a couple of weeks ago if I had just thought to do it and made myself uh, find that motivation about a week before the end of March I was like I've got all of my pickups for this month already here. Nothing else was scheduled to come in before April 1st. I can do this video right now. And then I just did the usual, oh, I'll do it in a day or two or I'll get it done. And then in my world and in my life, uh, a lot of hell broke loose. Uh, in the last couple of weeks, it's been really hard to, to find the time to do anything that I really wanted to do. But... Anyways, with that out of the way, I want to continue to keep these videos to the monthly pace that I've been trying to do. Instead of combining them into multiple months, uh, this will be quick and easy because I only have a few things to show. Um, April's pickup video will be a bit beefier. It will be a little bit more. I imagine overall it will be a little bit more than this. But anyway, um, I've got three movies and four games that's what I have to show so I'm gonna start off with the couple of blu-rays that I got um, the first two of the three movies that I have to show are the power of Facebook marketing I guess they're not the first time I bought a movie because some sort of a advertisement popped up on Facebook and and I thought oh well that looks interesting and then I'd go and look to see if there was a retail release and they were only available through these specific um, movie pages. Uh, but the first one that I picked up is a movie called Mad Heidi. Um, yeah, I haven't opened this or watched this yet, but it looked like a very campy sort of like, um, I think set in... in like World War II era time. I could be wrong about that. The little girl from the Alps is back with a vengeance. This this movie has Casper Van Dien. Um, if anybody remembers him from Starship Troopers. I don't know what else he did after that. That's the only movie I really remember him from. Um, but this just looked... It's, it's, it's a comedy. It's kind of... Uh, I guess you would call it like a... The... It, it's on the back of this it says Swiss exploitation films, so maybe that's the best way to to think of this as a Swiss exploitation film. Um, but like I said, I, I do believe that the uh, time frame of this is is sort of around World War Two. It may be riffing on that, and it may not refer to it as World War Two. It may not refer to it as Nazi Germany or anything like that. But I, I just thought it looked interesting. It wasn't super expensive. Although I will say that it was over way overpriced in terms of the shipping. And there was no tracking involved in the shipping. It got here in a timely amount of time. But all I got was your, your order has shipped. And then one day it showed up in the mail. And it came with a couple of, uh, I guess, like postcards advertising the movie. I wish I could get, give more details about it, but like I said, I haven't watched it. Uh, I'm super bad about watching movies, even though I did watch a few movies in the last, like, month or so. Um, the next movie that I have is also a Facebook movie, something I saw advertised on Facebook. I guess I gave this movie more credit than uh, maybe it really deserved, because I saw it on Facebook a few times, and I thought it was like the next big horror movie, like slasher movie that was coming out, um, and it was apparently just, once again, just a movie that was only really being offered, advertised on places like Facebook and Instagram, and then you had to order from their, their website, uh, but that movie is called Kill Her Goats, and like I said, this is a slasher, horror slasher style movie. Um, I'm not really super into horror movies unless there's some sort of a, what I call like a, a, a hook or a gimmick to them. Um, but this one just looked interesting. It looked like it was, I, I want to say low, low budget, but it's not necessarily that it's low budget, but it is advertised as all practical effects and no CGI. 
Unfortunately, I have heard of, from a few people who did watch it, and they said it was pretty bad. But then again, I don't have a problem with bad movies. I've always kind of been interested in bad movies, bad video games, at least if they're so bad that they're good or there's some sort of redeeming content to find out of them. Uh, and this didn't come with necessarily like little postcards like that other one did, but sort of some advertisements here. There's a coming soon movie called Fog City. Um, so this Buckle, Buckleby's Pizza, which I want to say is probably something from this movie or some other movie. But it is interesting because this has a an autograph from a Steve Walsh on the back. I'm going to assume, yeah, writer-director Steve Walsh, not Walsh. So, that was interesting for, for what that all was. Um, but then the next thing, the last movie that I have here, was actually one I've been wanting to see for a while. I've been waiting for this to come out so I could pick it up. I got it, um, but I didn't watch it right away. And then I ended up, due to things that were going on in my world, uh, my dad is, is here, he's in the area, and uh, he's been at my house quite a bit the last few weeks. And he wanted to watch this one too. Well, I told him that it was good and, and that it won, that uh, Brendan Fraser won the Academy Award for Best Actor this year. Uh, but this is The Whale, and uh, I uh, really enjoyed this movie. It was really, really good. Very interesting. It's offbeat. It's, it's got some, some parts in it that are uh, a little out there. Um, but I did think that Brendan Fraser did an amazing job as this guy who, uh, I don't know if I'm in the minority or the majority here in, in this, but, you know, for me, Brendan Fraser was, you know, Airheads and, and some, like, 90s baseball movies, and then he was Scorpion King, uh, or the Mummy movies, I guess, more technically, and, and then he was just sort of like gone for a long time. And he wasn't necessarily gone. He just wasn't on my radar for a while. And then all of a sudden people started talking about, hey, he's in this new m movie, which is from Darren Aronofsky. Um, and it's called The Whale. And he's, you know, he looks extremely overweight in this because he's wearing like a fat suit. There may have been some controversy around that one. I don't remember. But, well, I, I heard about it. I guess I just don't know for sure. I didn't pay much more attention to the fact that they were talking about it. But the movie is really, really good, and I think people should check it out. Uh, maybe you don't necessarily have to buy it, but rent it, stream it, whatever the case may be. Because uh, I really was into it, and my dad liked it a lot, too. Alright, so now it's time for the four movies, or the four video games that I got. Once again, all PS4 games, as usual. Um, the first thing I got here is Where the Heart Leads. Um, this is sort of a small indie title. Uh, I guess you would maybe call it a walking simulator style game. Uh, I do think there's like maybe some puzzle elements to it. Um, but uh, I remember hearing about when this game came out and some outlets gave it poor reviews. I still figured I would buy it at some point. I managed to pick this up off of eBay from a seller for around $11 or $12. Uh, brand new, unopened, but it does have the holes punched through the UPC underneath the seal. So I've heard that this is uh, a practice that is done sometimes for copies of games that will be used for previews or reviews or whatever that might be sent out to outlets for whatever reason. And maybe because this was a small indie title that... Uh, didn't review well perhaps that's why somebody's selling these new copies for really really cheap um, I don't think or at least I hope that it isn't a scam type thing and that there isn't a game inside of it but that's that one and then next up I've got so this is the second of three releases that I lumped together I do believe they came out at the same time but they're all very kind of similar uh, CRPGs um, from 20, 15, 20, 25 years ago that were ported onto the current systems at the time, PS4 and Xbox One and the Switch. Um, 
the first one that I that I got and I would have shown it in a, a pickups video somewhere in the past was Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 I believe then this one is Planescape Torment and Icewind Dale and these are referred to as the enhanced editions so this has these two games of which I've heard a lot about especially Planescape Torment I happen to have a game that's called Torment Tides of Numenera or something like that it's sort of a spiritual successor to Planescape Torment I believe it may have even been worked on by people who uh, did the original Planescape Torment um, the third and last one of these is the Neverwinter Nights Enhanced Edition. And, uh, for some reason I thought every single one of these three releases had two games. Baldur's Gate 1 and 2 or Baldur's Gate and Baldur's Gate something. And then this one with Planescape Torment and Icewind Dale. But I guess the Neverwinter Nights one or Neverwinter is just that one game. But I could be wrong. But anyway these are just games that I've seen for a long time and I've been interested in them. Games that have that isometric viewpoint <clears throat> which is you know very Diablo-like. That's the game series I always think of with it. But Diablo is a title that I never really got into because I I couldn't I couldn't find the story uh, very captivating in, in, in the Diablo games. I feel like these games and some of the newer ones like Divinity Original Sin and Disco Elysium and whatnot are are more story f based and story focused um, but yeah anyway I've been getting these here they I think these all released at like thirty dollars a piece and now you can get them for like ten to fifteen dollars or so on eBay so picked up that one that way Next up, I have a game that I pre-ordered, and I got this one. I originally was going to pre-order it from Red Art Games because they were the first place to um, open a pre-order for it, but it was the PAL version, and I don't have a problem with the PAL versions. I know that on my PS4, it's all region-free. Um, but Video Games Plus, probably my new favorite place to get video games, had this up for pre-order on their website, and it was the NTSC version, so I was like, I'm going to get it from them. And anyway, this is Iodin Chronicle Rising uh, for PS4. Yeah, this is, of course, available on all a bunch of different platforms. Um, but what this is, is essentially... There's a game that's coming out called Iodin Chronicle 100 Heroes, I believe, is the exact title. And it's... Um, and I'm going to probably mispronounce it, but I'm going to pronounce it the way that I've always pronounced it, and that's Sukoden. But I've heard people calling it Suikoden. Um, but it was an old series of uh, JRPGs going back to the PS1, PS2 era. Uh, games I always wanted to play, but never did get, get them. Um, and then they became expensive over the years. Um, and they had... I think every single one of them allowed you to recruit up to 108 characters who could be a part of your party in, in the Suikoden or Sukoden games. And, you know, I think they went to five. I could be wrong. Maybe there was less. Maybe there was more. But I think there were a total of five games or four. Like I said, I don't, I don't know or remember exactly. Um, and then eventually the series just kind of went away. So, I don't know if they're people who worked on Sukoden Suikoden, or if they're people who just loved those games so much they wanted to make their own spiritual successor. That's Iodin Chronicle 100 Heroes, I believe, but I don't know for sure on this either. But I believe that was a Kickstarter game, and it did really, really well. And that might be why this game exists and why this game is sitting in my hands here. This is sort of a side or spin-off story to 100 Heroes, which 100 Heroes is going to play like the Suikoden Suikoden games. But Chronicles Rising, Iodin Chronicle Rising is a more of a side-scrolling style game. I don't know if any of the screenshots there on the back will will help with that but it is essentially a side-scrolling I, I would say action RPG and it looked really cool and it was also 
interesting and cool that 100 Heroes was the big game that was getting all the hype, and then this game comes out long before it. 100 Heroes still isn't out. I think it was supposed to be due out this year, but I don't know if it's going to make that date or not, because we haven't heard anything in a while. But we have this game here now, and as a part of the pre-order for it, there's an Iodin Chronicles Rising soundtrack that came uh, when you pre-ordered on some of the different websites. VGP did it, Red Art Games did it for sure. Uh, I don't know if there were main retail releases for that and if they got a soundtrack. Um, but I'm always cool with the pre-order bonus thing like that. Okay, and the last thing that I have here is the big title for me for the month. Uh, especially once I'm able to get started into this series. This is the second in game in this series that I've picked up, and I think the previous one that I bought is in the stack uh, on the shelf from the last pickups video that I did. But anyway, this is The Legend of Heroes Trails to Azure. Azure, Azure. Um, this is in the Trails of... Tra Legend of Heroes, I think, is the overall series, but the Trails of Cold Steel games are a part of this series and tie into this game. The other game that I have, which was Trails from Zero, or Trails of Zero, or <laughs> and then I know that the next one that's coming out is coming out in July, and it's Trails to Reverie, or of Reverie, or from Reverie, or whatever it is. Um, it's just very important for me to get games like this into my library because I never expected the Trails of Cold Steel games, I think especially 1 and 2, to get so freaking expensive years after they came out. I wanted to buy all those games when they came out, but they were $60 games, and I, the last few years I've, it's, I cherry-pick what games I buy at 60 I just lean into the idea and the concept that games will get cheap after they've been out for six months, a year, two, three years. Uh, but, you know, not five to ten years later when you might expect them to be on eBay and be super expensive. So now I'm buying all of these as soon as they come out. Uh, and then I'm going to start piecing together the Trails of Cold Steel games, including going after PAL versions of the ones that are too expensive over here. Because I don't really care. Like, this is, an, is a deluxe edition which it comes with a digital soundtrack and a mini art book. Cool. But some of the Trails of Cold Steel games in the NTSC regions here in America had the boxes and all the extra stuff, and that's fine too, but they're super expensive now, and I just want a basic disc version like this that doesn't have to have even the extra box or the extra content. Just give me the game. I just want to play the game. I really want to play this series. I've, you know, for years of there's like there's Final Fantasy and there's Dragon Quest and there's, um, I'm trying to think of big popular series that have been around. Uh, I can think of older series like Wild Arms and oh, Sukoden or Suikoden that I was talking about before, but a lot of those have been gone for a long time. When you think about series that are are, are out now. Final Fantasy still exists. Dragon Quest still exists. Um, but then I start to think about the Trails of Cold Steel or Legend of Heroes. I think about the Atelier series. Um, and and, and I, any other moment I'd probably be able to, to list off a thousand things. But I've heard so much about all these different series. There's the Tales of series. That's another one that's that's out and still going. I'm trying to piece together some of that. I think the Tales series and this Legend of Heroes series are constantly held up as the best of those. There's the E series, which I've gotten started in um, as well, and I know some of those are supposed to be really good. I just want to get the ones that are really, really fun. I want to ex experience some good, fun JRPGs or just RPGs, action RPGs. Um, and I, I want to do it without busting the bank. Okay, so that's it. Those are all my pickups 
Uh, I've yacked long enough. I really don't want this video to be super long, so I'm just going to try to cut it short right here. I'm um, really looking forward to doing this for April, though, because I have some cool stuff coming in, some cool stuff that I already have. Um, so it should be uh, a good month. And and knowing all the things that have come out here recently, you may have noticed that I not I don't have no Resident Evil 4 or, or you know anything like that and the the pickups video for April is going to be the same thing there's lots of games that have come out over the last few months that I really want but I'm just going to try to wait for them to be cheaper because I feel like they're a little bit more mainstream and they'll be more readily available than the stuff that I am picking up um, so yeah anyway that's just it April should be fun and it may surprise you some of the games that are lacking uh, all right, well, anyway, I'll shut up now. See you in the next video.